a bus fire. A 57-year-old area resident, Leho, a pedestrian, was struck and killed. Crash after crash and tens of thousands of dollars in fines from the federal government. Chaos and confusion around 8 this morning at the intersection of Bowery and Canal Streets in New York. The bus kidded. bus just went running. Despite reports out of New York that a woman was injured and screaming on the bus that she couldn't get off, there were other injuries and a fatality. See, your hand is still shaking. Yeah, I'm still shaking from the whole thing. Because the thing is, I, I would've, it would have been me, you know, on the bus if it, if it happened three seconds later. When we've mentioned to people that we're, we're going on the Fungwa bus, people kind of step back as if to say, you're taking your life in your own hands. Oh, really? Since 1965, immigration patterns slowly established a strong Chinese community in the United States. Chinatowns, such as the one found in Manhattan, are home to hundreds of thousands of Chinese immigrants. Living and breathing their own rich and distinct culture, they eventually developed a local economy. But with the immigration influx growing exponentially, a shortage of jobs forced people to find new ways to survive under conditions imposed on a minority. Hiding in the lower east end of Manhattan is a world lost inside the Big Apple. The relaxation of federal rules about who could legally sell bus services opened the door for immigrant entrepreneurs. In response to the need of a struggling community of Chinese for an affordable travel option, in 1996, Pei Lin Liang began shuttling immigrant workers between Brooklyn and Manhattan in a jitney van. Eventually, these same immigrants began requesting Liang to charter his van to visit their children at college in Boston. By the fall of 1998, Fung Hua had a U.S. Department of Transportation permit that allowed them to serve a sizable immigrant labor pool and to enlist its members as drivers and ticket sellers. It didn't take long for this low-cost mode of transportation to catch on beyond the immigrant community. The Fung Hua Bus Company had begun shuttling college students and other cash-strapped Americans between New York's Chinatown and Boston's for $15 each way. Lacking any sort of publicity or advertising campaigns, its sales were fueled primarily by word of mouth. While they seem to follow government regulations, they operate in a grey area characterized by their informality. Tickets are sold out of a window booth on the street. Hand the women a 20, get a ticket and a 5 back with no words exchanged. Unlike all other bus lines which benefit from their own dock in Port Authority, Fung Hua's bus stop is curbside in the shadow of the Manhattan Bridge on Canal Street and Bowery. Settling a $15 ticket, the Fung Hua relies on the cost-free method of curbside boarding in order to stay in business. The boarding process generates lines that can wall off vendors from customers, cabs from their fares, and streets from eager jaywalkers. It gets messy in Chinatown. Narrow streets carry pedestrian volumes that rival those found in China, while shop owners line the sidewalks with bins of produce and wares. We 
research the federal web contradiction lies therein attacked by the media for lack of safety in a few notorious accidents fung are subject to the same policies as their mainstream competitors yet lacks the business structure to operate on the same level joe mccrisky is a transportation safety consultant are companies with high scores putting the public in danger yes yes it, it's uh, you know they have an obligation to their customers, whether it's a trucking company or a bus company, to operate that vehicles w within the range of the regulations. If they don't follow the regulations, that puts everyone at risk. Even though they compete with companies with national operating structures, they are limited by their circumstances, incapable of living up to the same standards and complying with federal regulations. Emerging in response to the need of immigrant workers, the Fungwa service culture is characterized by informality and a cost-efficient approach to regulations and safety standards. These travel conditions are reminiscent of the struggle endured by Chinese migrant workers who fight against the dire circumstances when attempting to travel during the New Year's holiday in China. Relying on trains scheduled and maintained by the government, 130 million people are forced to travel without any regards to comfort, convenience, reliability or safety. The crush of faces, possessions and umbrellas look almost like an abstract composition until you are in the middle of it, at which point it becomes chaotic, overwhelming and violent. Despite its booming economy, China is still full of very poor and exploited people. A generation clinging to the old Confucian values and sturdy peasant custom lives modestly and thriftily, always attempting to improve their living standards no matter how harsh their lives may seem to Westerners. Yes, the freedom to travel on a holiday comes with a price. And sometimes, the price can be very high. This cultural norm is shared by Chinese immigrants fighting for a better life here, in New York City. Pressed by the need to travel cheaply and quickly, Feng Hua was born. The organic and informal nature of Feng Hua bus service is authentic. It is consistent with the norm in China. It allows travelers to experience hints of Chinese behavior and worldview reflected in every aspect of their business interactions. Feng Hua has achieved the remarkable feat of growing from something small and informal into a company that competes with transportation giants such as Greyhound. Although not originally intended to be the same marketplace, Feng Hua has drastically affected the interstate travel industry, existing as an affordable option. It set new price standards, creating a travel option for people who otherwise wouldn't be able to. A fundamental takeaway from the Feng Hua business culture is that riders consider the Chinatown bus something closer to an attractive cultural experience than to an objective travel choice, an exotic experience that exists outside conventional urban norms. It represents an important new lens through which Chinatown is understood in contemporary cities. The bus joins other carriers of culture, such as food and media, artifacts that are consumed by outsiders, shaping the world's perspective of these immigrants and their communities. Yeah. Everything happened, they, they say, phone wash, phone wash. Come on, you know what I'm saying? You have to be fair, you know what I'm saying? Right? Yeah. Married in China time because they're not belong here, you came from the China. They think it's because you're immigrants, yeah. I, I, I want to know what they did, so. Yeah. Okay, take a picture of me, I want to.